So after many years, OpenAI remembered what their company name was and released an open model. Specifically, GPT-OSS, there are two models, one with 20 billion parameters and another with 120 billion parameters. And so far, at least in my testing, it seems like a pretty decent one. Not everybody has the same opinion and experience, but I mean, it's an open model. You could download it, self-host it, and access it from anywhere in the world, which is what we're going to be showing you in this video. I'm going to be hosting this model locally on this mini PC right here. This kind of is a beefy boy, and with any AI models, you're going to want to have good hardware, specifically a good amount of RAM or VRAM to actually be able to use the model efficiently. This thing it has an MPU in it. It has 64 gigs of RAM. It's the latest AMD Ryzen mobile CPU, so it's probably going to be okay, at least for the 20B model that is. Also, since I am going to be using this as a server and I want to be able to access it remotely anytime, I am going to have Ubuntu server on this, but you can run this on basically anything you can run Olama on, which is what we're going to be using to download and use the model. And then later on in the video, so we don't have to be in the terminal all the time, we are going to be getting our very own web interface hosted with Docker so we can interact with the AI as if it was some normal web service like uh, ChatGPT, DeepSeek, Gemini, so on and so forth. What we're gonna do is SSH into it and get started. When you're working in Ubuntu, the first thing you're gonna want to do before anything really is update your system. So we're gonna do sudo app update, app upgrade. There's nothing to do, so that is good. The next step is going to be getting Olama. Olama, again, is how we are going to actually download and run this new uh, open source model from GPT or from OpenAI. We can do this with a little curl script, and this is available directly on their website it's just their own install sh so if we hit enter it's going to do everything it needs to do to get that up and going and there we go it took about two minutes to complete and we can see my amd gpu is ready so it should run pretty good and if i actually bring in the olama website here we could head over to models and we can see right here gpt oss this is their new open source model you can run locally and you have the two versions here we are gonna be running the 20 billion model because the much larger and better model requires a significant amount of RAM. So if I give this a click, I can copy this command right here, which is an Olama run command, give that a copy. Then we can minimize this and drop it in and it should just run. It might take a sec to download, of course, so it's gonna pull the manifest. And there you go, it's about 13 gigs in size, so it's gonna take a sec. It's a fresh model, so there might be a lot of people downloading it. There we go, it's verifying and success. So now just like that, you're in the model, you're running it locally on your computer, your server, whatever it may be. I could ask you something such as, what are the recommended specs for the new OpenAI models? Be a little more specific. Hit enter and we'll kind of see how quickly it responds. So we do get the thinking prompt, which is cool. That was very similar to a uh, deep seek. Ooh. I hear it cooking, it's firing up. Oh yeah, look at all of that. Now this model probably isn't trained on this data as of yet, but it is giving me a response. It's trying to figure out what I'm talking about, I'm trying to figure out the structure for the answer. Ah, it's making me a little table, very nice. Let's go ahead and ask it something else here. I just hit Control C to get out of that. How far is the sun from Earth? That's probably some data it's uh, better trained on. There we go, didn't have to think nearly as hard for that one. And we got the miles here, the kilometers, whatever you happen to use. And it's going down to the point in orbit because it is kind of more of an oval. So there are going to be different distances depending on the actual location of the earth. But that's kind of, this is an astronomy video. So we have the server, we have the model downloaded. We can use the model using CLI. What I'm going to do now is give myself remote access to this. And then after that, we're going to set up the web GUI so it can be more of a familiar interface. So. I'm gonna go ahead and back out of there. And what we're gonna to want to do is install NetBird. For this video, I'm gonna assume you already have a NetBird account, maybe some peers already set up. If you don't, it's real easy to sign up and there's a great onboarding process that will help you get going. But I'm just gonna go over here and generate a quick setup key for this installation. When we get this set up, we can uh, do a peer-to-peer -peer connection or even use it to connect to other devices in our home server with the networks feature. This is our Ubuntu AI server and we're gonna create that setup key. So there it is, I'm gonna give it a copy. If I click install NetBird right here, it's actually gonna give us some commands that we can use to get it up and going real quick and easy. So I'm just gonna copy that installation command and drop it on in, type in our password, and there we go, NetBird is installed. So now we can grab the run NetBird command, get this one with the setup key already there, 
and then drop this one in, hit enter, and it should go ahead and connect for us. And there we go, it's connected. So now if I back out here, go over to our peers, we should see this Ubuntu AI peer right here with its very own IP address. And we can actually test that out. Let's go up here and connect to my hotspot instead because then it will be on a completely different network than what this machine is running on. So now that I'm connected there, let's make sure our Netbird client is connected. So click right here, you can install the Netbird client on almost any computer out there. And you can see I'm already connected. Here is that Ubuntu AI server in peers. I'm gonna add it to a group real quick so I can create an access policy. So I'm just gonna call this AI server. We'll go ahead and select that and then save the groups. And now under policies, my user is part of the IT admins group, so I could create a new one for this access. So me, the IT admin, I want full access to the AI server. I can specify ports and all that if I would like to, but let's just enable this policy. This is my AI access and add that policy. So now let's go back to peers and get the peer-to-peer uh, -peer IP address to connect. So right here, Ubuntu AI, let's copy that. And now if I go back to the terminal, this connection is probably gonna stall out because I'm not connected to the local IP address anymore. But if I open a new terminal and I ping the Netbird IP address directly, you could see I have a connection there. And just to kind of show you an example of kind of how the policies work in effect, is if I go back to the policies and then I'm to disable this AI access, just like that, you can see we're getting request timeout. If I go ahead and enable AI access, then it should correct itself. Oh, there it goes. So now that was just a ping. Since I enabled SSH, I should be able to just SSH directly into it. So SSH, and this is netbird at the IP address. Hit enter, yes, password. And then we are in. And since I'm using my phone's hotspot, this is a completely different network. So that's kind of how we can test to make sure that this will actually work remotely. And then of course, from a remote location, I can go ahead and run this model and have full access to it from basically anywhere in the world that I have an internet connection. What is Netbird? Oh, it's thinking about it. And it's pretty accurate. Dang, it's thinking about covering a lot. Netbird is built for developers, DevOps teams, and small to mid-sized businesses with a zero trust style network without the heavy handed configuration of traditional VPNs. Beautiful. I'm gonna cancel that out. If you wanna learn more, check out our website. Now what I'm gonna do is get it so we can actually interact with this in a more comfortable and familiar way. And that is with a web GUI. And by web GUI, I'm referencing open web UI. Setting this up is Fairly simple, we're gonna be using Docker, so you can set this up on any machine that can run Docker. But what we're gonna to want to do here is some work in the terminal, and I'm just gonna stay on this remote network. We're using Netbird to connect to it remotely, so we have full access. We can do everything that we were able to do before locally through Netbird with that direct kind of peer-to-peer -peer connection here. So first thing, Olama is running as a system CTL service. So we're gonna go ahead and edit that service, type in our password, and we're gonna expose the host so Docker can see it, which is what we're gonna be using to set up the uh, open web UI. So if I do service, environmental variable of Olama host is localhost, that will help it so Docker can see and utilize that system CTL service. So control O to output that, exit out, and now we can reload and restart Olama with that new configuration. And now I'm going to install Docker real quick. I will link down below so all these commands will be available. But first, we're going to download the git docker sh script. And then we can run the script with just sudo sh and then the name of the script. And it's going to install everything that Docker needs to run. And just like that, we now have Docker installed. And just a little pro tip, if you want to run Docker without using sudo, we use a user mod and add our user to the Docker group, just like that. And then we can type in new grp docker to go ahead and reload that. And now I believe we have Docker up and going. So for the actual like Docker files, you could put this wherever you want. I'm currently just in my home directory. That's gonna be fine. But I'm gonna make a new directory and call it open web UI, just like that. And then we can CD into that directory just like so. So print working directory, you can see where we are. And then what I'm gonna do is make a new compose file to run this application. So if I do nano compose.yaml, hit enter, we can copy and paste the Docker Compose directly from the open web UI documentation, just like this. So we can see the port it's gonna run on. It's gonna make a new data folder in our current working directory. 
we have the Docker image here and it's exposing the extra hosts. So it's going to be able to utilize that Olama service since it's now visible with localhost. So let's output that go out of there. And now we can fire this up with just a simple docker compose up dash D command attached. So we can do other things while it's running. It's going to go ahead and pull all the images that it needs. There we go. It's just about finishing up the download and extraction and boom, it's running. So now again, reminder, we're still technically on a remote network since I'm using my phone's hotspot. So what we can do here is go and I'm going to copy that IP address again. So if I go over to peers to our Ubuntu UI server, copy that IP address, we should be able to go directly to that IP address at the port 3000. And there it goes. It is loading. And now we go ahead and click on get started right here. We have some stuff to fill out real quick email and then give it a pretty decent password, create our admin account. And there we go. We got some confetti. We could read the release notes, but let's click let's go. And you can see up here automatically it has our current model, the GPT OSS model from OpenAI, since we already ran and downloaded it through the terminal. And the real cool thing about using this interface is here you can capture and upload files to it, such as a PDF. You can have it extract data from that or use a PDF for like research purposes. Has some suggested things. So if I say, show me a code snippet of a website sticky header in CSS and JavaScript, hit send message. It's gonna go ahead and actually use that. And we can see this, well, we, at least we can see it firing up and working. If we open up our terminal, and go over to htop, you could see it is cooking. And it's thinking and it kind of hides that instead of the terminal so I can open this up if I want to actually see what it's thinking about. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and wait for a response. Which it didn't really take too long, took 11 seconds to think about it and you can see it's filling everything out. It's filling out some sample content here and you can see as it generates, we actually get a little preview here on the side. If I could scroll down, that would actually be a sticky header, but that's one of the other really cool things about open web UI here is it gives you all the features you'd expect from like your standard, like chat GPT, deep seek, Gemini, all that kind of stuff in which you can copy downloads so if I hit download. You could see it actually downloads that HTML artifact right there. It gives us a brief overview of how it works and we can actually interact with it, regenerate and see like the actual load that it took. So that prompt was 84 tokens, took two minutes, 11 seconds, just some extra detail, really nice. And that is how you host your very own local AI, accessing it with Netbird through the web browser in just a normal chat interface. It's awesome that we could do this. It's super easy to connect with Netbird. And if you'd like to learn more or get any of the commands that we've used in this video, there will be links down below. Do make sure you subscribe to this channel for future videos like this. And with all that, I do hope you have a beautiful day and good bye.